Silas Dean was an American merchant, politician and diplomat, a supporter of American independence. Dean served as a delegate to the Continental Congress and then as the United States' first foreign diplomat when he traveled to France to lobby the French government for aid. Dean was drawn into a major political fight over his actions in Paris, and subsequently endorsed loyalist criticisms of American independence. After the war, Dean lived in Ghent and then London. During his return voyage back to America, Dean died under mysterious circumstances. Early Life and Family Silas Dean was born on January 4, 1738, O.S. December 24, 1737, in Groton, Connecticut, to blacksmith Silas Dean and his wife Hannah Barker. The younger Silas was able to obtain a full scholarship to Yale and graduated in 1758. In April 1759 he was hired to tutor a young Edward Bancroft in Hartford, Connecticut. In 1761 Dean was admitted to the bar and practiced law for a short time outside of Hartford before moving to Weathersfield, Connecticut and establishing a thriving business as a merchant. Dean married twice, both times to wealthy widows from Weathersfield. He married his first wife, Mehitable Webb, in 1763, after assisting her with the settlement of her first husband's estate. They had one son, Jesse, who was born in 1764. Mehitable died in 1767. Silas then married Elizabeth Evers in 1770. Elizabeth was a granddaughter of Connecticut Governor Gurdon Saltonstall of the Massachusetts Saltonstall family. Elizabeth died in 1777 while Silas was in France negotiating for the Continental Congress. One of Dean's step-sons was Continental Army Officer Brigadier General Samuel Blatchley Webb, Continental Congress. Dean took an active part in the movements in Connecticut preceding the American War of Independence. He was elected to the Connecticut House of Representatives in 1768, appointed to the Weathersfield Committee of Correspondence in 1769, and from 1774 to 1776 was a delegate from Connecticut to the Continental Congress. While a member of Congress, Dean used his influence to obtain a commission in the Continental Army for his stepson, Samuel B. Webb, who had accompanied him to Philadelphia. Dean excelled in the committee work of Congress, helping to coordinate the attack on F.D. Ticonderoga and established the United States Navy. A dispute between Dean and fellow Connecticut delegate Roger Sherman, over whether to support the appointment of Israel Putnam as a major general under Washington's command led the Connecticut legislature to replace Dean as a delegate to the Continental Congress. However, instead of returning to Connecticut, Dean decided to remain in Philadelphia and assist Congress in some of its work. France, on March 2, 1776, Dean was appointed by Congress to go to France as a secret envoy to induce the French government to lend its financial aid to the colonies. Subsequently he became, along with Benjamin Franklin and Arthur Lee, one of the regularly accredited commissioners to France from Congress. On arriving in Paris, Dean at once opened negotiations with the Comte de Virginie, who was the French foreign minister. With the assistance of the playwright and outspoken supporter of American independence, Beau Marquez, Dean organized the shipment of shiploads of arms and munitions to the colonies, helping to finance the war. He also tacitly approved of Scotsman James Aitken's plot to destroy Royal Navy stores and dockyards in Portsmouth and Plymouth, England on behalf of the Continental cause. While in Paris, Dean enlisted the services of a number of foreign soldiers to the cause, among whom were Lafayette Baron Johann de Kalb, Thomas Conway, Casimir Pulaski, and Baron von Steuben. Many of these officers soon made themselves unpopular once they reached America for a variety of reasons. As Dean had signed the contracts hiring him, he was given the blame by politicians in Philadelphia. This eventually led Congress to recall him on December 8, 1777. 
Before returning to America, Dean on February 6, 1778 signed the Treaties of Amity and Commerce and of Alliance with France, which he and the other commissioners had successfully negotiated. As a mark of approval for Dean's conduct in Paris, the French government agreed that he should travel back to the United States aboard a warship carrying out the first French ambassador to the United States. Louis XVI presented Dean with a portrait framed with diamonds and both Virgin Noah and Franklin wrote letters commending Dean. Accusations in Congress The letter from Lovell only mentioned giving a report to Congress about the conditions of the affairs in Europe and Dean fully expected to be sent back to Paris within a few months. Upon his return, he faced questions from Congress based on newly arrived accusations of financial misdeeds committed by Dean in France sent by Arthur Lee. Dean had left his account books back in Paris and was unable to adequately defend himself against the charges or seek reimbursement for the use of his own money in procuring supplies in France. In Congress, Dean was defended by John Jay in a long and bitter dispute over the charges. Frustrated, Dean published a public defense in the December 5, 1778 issue of Pennsylvania Packet entitled The Address of Silas Dean to the Free and Virtuous Citizens of America in which he attacked Arthur Lee, other members of the Lee family, and their associates. Arthur's brothers, Richard Henry Lee and Francis Lightfoot Lee both wrote responses, calling Dean's accusations libelous and injurious to the American cause for independence. On January 14, 1779 Dean replied in the Pennsylvania packet listing eight ships that had sailed from France with supplies due to his efforts. Congress then offered Dean $10,000 in depreciated continental currency in compensation but Dean refused feeling the offer was too low. Dean's requests for copies of his receipts and disbursements were refused by France, since France had not officially made alliance with the 13 colonies until February 6. 1778, they felt that any such evidence of their prior involvement would be a diplomatic embarrassment. Dean in turn then agitated for a diplomatic break with France and questioned the integrity of members of Congress who disagreed with him. Dean was finally allowed to return to Paris in 1780 to settle his affairs and attempt to find copies of the disputed records. When he arrived there he discovered that he was nearly ruined financially after the value of his earlier investments had plummeted and some of the ships carrying his merchandise had been captured by the British. Events turned even worse after the November and December 1781 publication in the Rivington's Royal Gazette in New York of private letters Dean had sent earlier to his brother, which were subsequently intercepted by the British. In the letters, Dean stated that he felt the military situation of the revolution was hopeless and suggested a rapprochement with Britain. This caused Dean to be branded as a traitor back home. When the letters of King George III were made public in 1867, it was revealed that on March 3, 1781, the King approved a request from Lord North to bribe Dean in an attempt to recruit him as a spy and to influence Congress. The British appear to have stopped their overtures toward him after the King read Dean's intercepted correspondence in mid-July 1781. The letters were then forwarded to General Clinton who provided copies to loyalist James Rivington to publish in his newspaper. Unbeknownst to Dean, his former secretary in Paris, Edward Bancroft had already been working as a British spy for £400 a year. Likewise, the British were also unaware that Rivington was also a spy, working for Washington as a member of the Culper Ring. After the war and death, in October 1781, Dean moved to the city of Ghent where he could live more cheaply than in Paris. He then moved to London in March 1783, hoping to find investors for manufacturing ventures he planned to pursue after he returned to the United States. Dean toured several manufacturing towns in England in late 1783, wanting to develop plans for steam engines that could operate grist mills, even consulting James Watt for advice. 
He also tried to attract investors for a plan to build a canal linking Lake Champlain and the St. Lawrence River. In 1784 he published a defense of his actions during the war entitled An Address to the Free and Independent Citizens of the United States of North America. Dean became bedridden in the fall of 1787 due to an unknown illness from which he did not fully recover until April 1789. His condition depleted all of his remaining money and forced him to rely on the charity of friends to pay for rent and food. Then in the summer of 1788 a Frenchman named Folloy approached Thomas Jefferson in Paris with an account book and a letter book dating from Dean's diplomatic mission, apparently stolen from Dean during his illness. Folloy threatened to sell the books to the British government if Jefferson did not purchase them first, which Jefferson eventually did after he negotiated a greatly reduced price for them. In 1789 Dean planned to set sail back to America to try to recoup his lost fortune and reputation. After boarding the ship Boston Packet, he mysteriously took ill and died on September 23 of that year. While the ship was awaiting repairs after turning back following damage from fierce winds, in 1959 historian Julian P. Boyd suggested that Dean may have been poisoned by Edward Bancroft, the British spy who had been employed by the American commissioners in Paris. He suspected Bancroft could have felt threatened by potential testimony from Dean to the American Congress. Legacy Silas Dean's granddaughter, Philura Alden pressed his case before Congress, and his family was eventually paid $37,000 in 1841 for the money owed to him on the grounds that the previous audit by the Continental Congress was ex parte, erroneous, and a gross injustice to Silas Dean. The successful revolutionary frigate Us Dean was named after him, as is the Silas Dean Middle School, the Webb Dean Stevens Museum, and the Silas Dean Highway in Wethersfield. His grand mansion, completed in 1766, was declared a national historical landmark and restored, and is open for public viewing as the Silas Dean House. There is a road in Ledyard, Connecticut, named for Dean.